Shabbat Shalom. This is going to be my Sabbath reading. We're starting with Genesis 18 in this particular video. If you haven't caught the rest of them, there is a playlist called Bible Study that you can go back and catch the rest. Um, sorry for the later posting today. I'm actually recording this the same day it's being posted. I usually don't do that, but I missed yesterday. It's been a hectic week, as many of you know. Um, no updates to the current situation, so I'll leave it at that because that's not the point of the video. <clears throat> so, uh, last time we had left off with, uh, Ishmael and all the people, Abraham's son and, uh, all the people in Abraham's house being circumcised by Abraham. I, I always want to know what that conversation was like. I really do. That was, that had to have been an interesting conversation to have. And it doesn't go into detail about the conversation. And he just was like, hey, come here. I'm going to, I'm going to go snip, snip. But yeah, <laughs> that, that had to have been a conversation in my opinion. It really did. So yeah. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to start this reading in a, in just a brief section of the, and I'm going to read the Shema again. This is going to be, uh, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four is where you can find the Shema. The Shema is considered to be the most holy prayer in Torah. Also is the most holy prayer in the Jewish religion. Although I am not Jewish, but I am Torah observant. So yeah, it's somewhat similar. It is, except for the fact that the Jewish people, as far as I understand, don't believe that Yeshua or Jesus was the Messiah. And I do. So yeah, that's how that works. All right. So uh, like I said, Deuteronomy 4 or Deuteronomy 6, chapter 4 is where you'll find the Shema. And I will read that first. It is actually considered a prayer. So we'll I'll try to do it in that fashion. Although my opinion on prayer is probably a, quite a bit different than everyone else's. So I'll Get into that in a different video. <clears throat> Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim. Yahweh is one. And you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all of your heart, with all of your being, and with all of your might. Amen. Now there is more to that, and I encourage you to read it. All right, so I am, as usual, in the scriptures. I also have for... Literal references, the King James sitting next to me. I also have a book of notes that is on the wrong page. So sorry for the racket. Here we go. Um, basically, my notes here are Torah. They are keeping up with Torah, keeping track of Torah, and the traditions of men versus what the Father has instructed us to do. So that's what my notes are, and I just reference it from time to time when I have questions, and yeah. Um, here, let me try to turn this a little, maybe. All right, so Genesis 18, I haven't proofread this. I, I usually don't, so I, like I usually do, I will butcher names and words, and I am not Hebrew, yet this is mostly in Hebrew, not mostly, but it, it keeps a lot of the original Hebrew words and Hebrew names, so that's... How that works. All right. I really do like the scriptures. I really do. Uh, the more I go through it, the, the more I like it. And for anyone who has asked, and I have had the question a couple of times, it is a complete Bible. It goes through what uh, the King James calls the New Testament and the Old or the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's not what this Bible calls it. It's the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, which is actually quite a big difference if you research what the word covenant actually means and I do have that in my notes but I'm not going into that today but anyway five minutes into this video and I still haven't started yet I'm rearranging my desk here it's a little cluttered uh, and I'll start my my reading with my traditional drink of coffee all right man itch my head <clears throat> so, like I said, we had just left off where Abraham had been circumcising everyone in his household, including his son. Um, it's pronounced Ish Ishmael in the King James, but over here it's spelled quite a bit differently. Ishmael, it's actually two words, or it has that little thing there. Anyway, <clears throat> so Genesis 18, verse 1. 
And Yahweh appeared to him by the tabernacle trees or terabith trees, yeah, terabith trees, in memory, memory, yeah, while he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. He's appearing to Abraham, I believe. So he lifted his eyes and looked and saw three men standing opposite him. Maybe it's Ishmael. Ishmael, he started to. Who's he appearing to? Let me go back. Doesn't really specify. So he lifted his eyes and looked and saw three men standing opposite of him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, Yahweh, if I have now, if I have now found favor in your eyes, please do not pass your servant by. So he he see, she, he saw three men approaching. And he immediately ran out and, and named one of them Yahweh the Father. So that's an interesting statement there. Four, please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And let me bring a piece of bread and refresh your hearts and then go on, for this is why you have come to your servant. And they said, do as you have said. So Abraham, that yeah, was Abraham. So Abraham ran into the tent to Sarah and said, hurry, make ready three uh, measures of fine flour, knead it and make cakes. Cakes sound good. And Abraham ran, to, <coughs> excuse me. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf and gave it to a young man and he hurried to prepare it. And he took curds and milk and then the calf, which he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. And they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, See in the tent. Wording is kind of, man, it was just, she's over there, y'all. But he's like, See in the tent. But, sorry. And he said, I shall certainly return to you according to the time of life. And see Sarah, your wife, is to have a son. And Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old and well advanced in age, and Sarah was past the way of women or woman. And Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my master, being old too? Shall I have pleasure, comma, my master, being old too? And Yahweh said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I truly have a child since I am old? Is any matter too hard for Yahweh? At the appointed time, I am going to return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah is to have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh, he being capitalized. There's a lesson there, obviously. I mean, obviously, you're going to. I didn't say that, Dad. Yes, you did. I heard you. I mean, that's, the, that's what pops into my head. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for my rambling here. Uh, <clears throat> 16. And the men rose up from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to see them away. And Yahweh said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham is certainly going to become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All the nations of the earth. There's a lot of questions about Native Americans and, and things like this. But it said earlier in this that he scattered everyone all over the world and then changed their languages. So if he wanted to send them overseas, he easily could have done so, right? My opinion. 19. For I have known him that he commands his children and his household after him to guard the way of Yahweh, to do righteousness and right ruling, so that Yahweh brings to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And Yahweh said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Amorah, it's Sodom and Gomorrah, but it's actually spelled Saddam and Amorah in this book, is great, and because their sin is very heavy, I am going down now to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me, and if not, I know. 
So the men turned away from there and went toward Sodom, Saddam, but Yahweh still stood before Abraham. And Abraham drew near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wrong? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for fifty righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to act in this way, to slay the righteousness with the wrongs, so the righteousness should be as the wrong. Far be it from you. Does the judge of all the earth not do right? And Yahweh said, If I find Saddam, yeah, Saddam, fifty righteous within the city, then I shall spare the, all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Look, please, I am who I am but dust and ashes, have taken it upon myself to speak to Yahweh. Suppose there are five less than the fifty righteous. Would you destroy all of the city for lack of five? And Yahweh said, If I find there are forty-five, I do not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose there are found forty. And he said, I would not do it for the sake of forty. And he said, Let not Yahweh be displeased and let me speak. Suppose there are found thirty. And he said, I would not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Look, please, I have taken it upon myself to speak to Yahweh. Suppose there are found twenty. And he said, I would not destroy it for the sake of twenty. And he said, Let not Yahweh be displeased, and let me speak only this time. Suppose there are found ten. And he said, I would not destroy it for the sake of ten. Then Yahweh went away as soon as he had ended speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Abraham's a bold dude, isn't he? I mean, that's that's a, that's a bold thing to say to your creator. We are uh, in between chapters now, about to start 19. Coffee break, you know. 19, verse 1. And the two messengers came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. We remember Lot, that's Abraham's nephew. And when Lot saw them, he rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Look, please, my masters, please turn in your servant's house and spend the night, and wash your feet, and rise early, and go your way. And they said, No, but let us spend the night in the open square. But he urged them strongly, and they turned into him and came into his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate the feast of unleavened bread. Before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every part, surrounded the house. And the Lord, and they called to Lot. Why did I say Lord? That, that word is not in this book. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to your to, to you tonight? Bring them out to us and let us know them. All the adults in the room know have the references of what know them means. Yeah. So Lot went out to them and through the doorway and shut the door behind him and said, Please, my brothers, do not do evil. Look, please, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you and do to them as you wish. Only do no deed to these men because they have come under the shadow of my roof. I have daughters. Now, I mean, that's that's some faith right there. You're going to trade your daughter for the lives of the messengers of Yahweh, which is widely considered to be angels. Widely considered to be angels that had visited Lot. And angels would be the messenger of Yahweh. And he's willing to give his daughters away so that nobody touches the two angels, the men that had come under his roof. I can't fathom that personally. I can't fathom that at all. But I'm also armed. So, yeah. anyway. But they said, stand back. We're on uh, 
19.9, by the way. But they said, stand back. And they said, this one came to sojourn and should he always judge. They're talking about Lot. He's a person that just, you know, he showed up one day and he moved in. Now we are going to treat you worse than them. So they pressed hard against the man, Lot, and came near to break the door down. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, and they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here, a son-in-law, and have and your uh, sons and your daughters and whomever you have in the city, bring them out of this place. For we are going to destroy this place because the cry against them has grown great before the face of Yahweh and Yahweh has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went and spoke to his son-in-law who had married his daughters and said, get up, get out of this place for Yahweh is going to destroy this city. But to his son-in-law, he seemed to be as one joking. They didn't believe him. And when morning dawned, the messengers urged Lot to hurry, saying, Get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he loitered, the men loitered. He, he was taking his sweet time. You know, like when you tell your kid to clean the, clean the bedroom. Yeah, that. And while he loitered, the men took hold of his hand and his wife's hand and the hands of his two daughters, Yahweh having compassion on him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. And it came to be when they had brought him outside that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be consumed. And Lot said to them, Oh no, Yahweh. Look, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have increased your loving commitment, which you have shown me by saving my life. But I am unable to escape to the mountains, lest I mountains, lest calamity overtake me and I die. So Lot didn't have his bug out bag. Look, please, this city is near enough to flee to. And it, sh it is small. Please let me escape there. It is not a small matter and let my uh, life be saved. And he, capital H, Yahweh, said to him, Look, I have favored you concerning this matter, also without overthrowing this city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I am not able to do any deed until you arrive there. So the name of the city was called Tassar. Tosar. 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 Mm, something like that. The sun had risen up upon the earth when Lot entered Tosar, and Yahweh rained sulfur and fire on Sodom and Amorah from Yahweh out of the heavens. There's comparison there to nuclear weapons. Basically, the father nuked them. He pushed the red button. There, there's just no point in lingering on such things. He overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. But his wife back from behind him and she became, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a post of salt. There's also uh, sayings about the post of salt that it was actually a post of ash, which either way. It really makes very little difference in the story, other than the lesson that is to be learned there to obey when the father tells you to do something. Don't look back. Don't look back. And Abraham rose early in the morning and went to the place where he had stood before Yahweh. And he looked toward Sodom and Amorah and took and toward all the land of the plain. And he looked and saw the smoke of the land, which went up like the smoke of a furnace. Thus it came to be when Elohim destroyed the cities of, of the plain, and Elohim remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of, his, out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. <sighs> that paragraph could have been shortened to like one sentence. Oh, I'm sorry. And Lot went up to Tosar 
and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him. For he was afraid to dwell in Tosar, and he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. And the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on earth to come into us as the way of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine and lie with him, so that we preserve the seed of our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he was not aware. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she arose. And it came, came to be on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, See, I lay with my father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight as well, and you go and lie with him, so that we keep the seed of our father. So they made their father drink wine that night as well, and the younger arose and lay with him. And when he was not aware of it, when she lay down or when she arose, thus both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. And the firstborn bore a son, called his name Moab, and is the, he is the father of the Moabites to this day. Moabites? Moabites. Yeah. And the younger, she also bore a son and called his name Ben Ami, and he is the father of the children of Ammon to this day. There's lessons there. First off, first lesson that comes to my mind is if your children are trying to get you drunk, don't do it. I mean, there's no good that's going to come from that whatsoever in any way that you look at it. There's no good. To, yeah. 20. I'm going to go ahead with 20. I'll probably stop at 21. 20 is pretty short. So, yeah, we'll get through it. Um, coffee break. Coffee break. Yeah. If your kids are trying to get you drunk, don't do it. Just there's there's no no good. They have nothing good planned. Just saying. 20. And Abraham set out from there to the land of the south and sojourned between Kadesh and Shur, Shur, S-H-U-R, and stayed in Gerar. And Abraham said concerning Sarah to his wife, she is my sister. You know, we've been through that again. And Abimelech sojourned in Gerar and sent and took Sarah. But Elohim came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, See, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. However, Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Yahweh, would you kill a right, righteous nation also? Did he not say to me, She is my sister? And she even herself said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and in the innocence of my hands, I have done this. And Elohim said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did keep this in the integrity of your heart. And so I keep kept you from sinning against me. For this reason, I did not let you touch her. And now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and let him pray for you, and you live. But if you do not return her, know that you shall certainly die, you and all that are yours. So Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all of his servants and spoke all these words in, the, in their hearing, and the men were greatly frightened. And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? And what have I sinned against you that you have brought on me and on my reign a great sin? You have done matters to me that should not be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this matter? And Abraham said, Only because I said to myself, The fear of Elohim is not in this place, and they shall kill me for the sake of my wife. And yet she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. So his wife, Abraham's wife, Sarah, was his half-sister in actuality. So he wasn't really lying. 
And it came to be when Elohim caused me to wander from my father's house that I said to her, this is your loving commitment that you should do for me in every place, wherever we go, say of me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep and cattle and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham, and he returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell wherever it is good in your eyes. And Sarah, he said, See, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. See, it is to you a covering of eyes before all who are with you and before all others, and you are cleared before everyone. And Abraham prayed to Elohim, and Elohim healed Abimelech and his wife and his female servants, so they bore children. For Yahweh had closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. <laughs> Technically, he wasn't lying. And, and there's a lot of talk about how the father has closed up the wombs of women and then reopened them in certain time periods. There's a lot of saying about keeping the biblical diet that has great health benefits to people and has actually made people who are barren not so anymore just from keeping the biblical diet. Um... The biblical diet can be found in the book of Leviticus, starting at chapter 11. It's really not a difficult thing to keep. The biggest problem most people have with the biblical diet is their bacon. Quite literally, bacon. They make turkey bacon. It's not too bad. It's not quite as good, but it's not too bad. They make beef bacon, which I'm told is way better than pork bacon. I've never had beef bacon. I've looked for it. I've had a hard time finding it. I don't really miss bacon. I really don't. It wasn't that big of a thing for me. It was, yeah, it was okay. But it wasn't that big of a thing. So, yeah, keeping the dietary laws can definitely be a great benefit to your health. It is proven, scientifically proven, that eating things like pork and other things that you shouldn't eat can be detrimental to your health. It can't. Pork alone is very bad for you. No matter what part of it you eat, it is very bad for you. There's obvious reasons biblical, biblically why pork is very bad for you. But also there are a lot of scientific reasons. I am told that, and I don't know how true this is. I'm told that if you take a, a can of soda and a pork chop, put the pork chop in a bowl and pour the soda on there, you'll see little worms coming out of the pork chop. So yeah, hope that hope that uh, curbs your appetite appetite for your bacon and your pork chops there. Hopefully. All right. So what date are we on? The twenty first. The next Sabbath reading will be. I, I try to do these bi weekly. I really do. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it because there are plans. And it, last week was crazy. This week may may be crazy as as well. Um. So it'll be the twenty eighth next week on the Sabbath, and it'll be two days after the Thanksgiving holiday. But I will definitely have this up for you earlier that day, assuming, well, yeah, I, I even if I had the ability to go back to work, I was not working Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so I would have had plenty of time either way. So, yeah, that has been my Bible study of this week. I really do prefer to do these twice a week. Maybe I'll do one live for you. Maybe. If you guys want me to try to do this live sometime midweek, let me know. And I will I will attempt that. We can have live discussions. It'll probably turn a couple of chapters into an hour or more. But hey, it'll be fun, right? It'll be fun. All right. This is James. I definitely will never monetize any of these Bible study videos. If you ever see that it has happened, please let me know in the comments so I can turn it off because I will not monetize these videos. I won't post my links to my store. I won't post the links to my PayPal. None of that will ever be in any of these videos. So if you see it, please let me know in the description, please. All right. Remember the Shema. Remember the Shema. It is the most holy prayer according to Torah. It is. 
and I agree. All right, this is James, Grim Survival and all that. There it is. So, yeah, I'll see you for the next one.